a wellbeing economy approach, you know, fundamentally means three things. First of all, we think about tomorrow when we're planning and implementing today. So what does that mean? It means that, you know, the, the world we live on is the only world we have. We fundamentally don't own uh, this, this space. We don't own this world. We're stewards of it for a period and then we hand it on to future generations. And we need to think that way when we design our economies, when we set priorities for government, um, and when we design the systems that you know, re result in health and wellbeing for populations. So it's about thinking about tomorrow's populations when we're planning and implementing today. The second is making sure that we give equal value to social, health and environmental markers of success and not simply continue to focus on economic parameters like gross domestic product or GDP, you know, when we're measuring success as a society. If you think about what is really important to you and your family, yes, you need a certain amount of money to be safe, to be able to feed yourself, to be able to put a roof over your head. But actually what's important to most people is more than just continuing to amass more and more money. It's about enjoying good health. It's about being safe, it's about being connected, and it's about knowing that future generations can enjoy a better quality of life, if not the same quality of life that we all do. And the third thing that we really would need to see within an intergenerational wellbeing economy approach is an equal focus and prioritisation in government and in government spending and, and um, uh, priority setting around things like housing, uh, education, um, social and, and employment issues, and of course, preventative health. We need a robust, world-class healthcare system, but we also need to make sure that people are not just being made well when they're sick, but kept well throughout life. Where the wellbeing economy cuts across the work that we're doing is that at the moment, when we look at our policy and our decision makers, they make decisions within silos. So a decision is either a health decision, or it's an education decision, or it's a transport decision, or it's a decision to do with disability. People's lives don't work in silos. So we've actually got to lift up and look at what are the priority areas that we're going to identify in Victoria and how are we going to invest accordingly. Because if a wellbeing economy is to work, it's got to lift up. It's a game changer for health and wellbeing because at the moment, a lot of the decisions that we make are really the pointy decisions when fundamentally at the end of the cliff decisions. So a lot of the way that we look at people's health and wellbeing is the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. We've actually got to take it right back to the other end and we've got to look at how do we actually look at people's health and wellbeing? How do we look at making sure people have got access to fresh food? How do we prevent people getting sick in the first place? And also, or if someone does get sick, how do we work for that um, early intervention? So at the moment, if someone gets sick, often when they try to you know, enter our, our health system, it's like getting a cut on the arm, going to the hospital and being told to come back when it's infected. We've actually got to flip the narrative around and really look at how we help people stay well and how they stay happy and healthy within their communities. It gives people hope because they're happy, they're well, they're connected to their communities and it focuses on the things that are good in life, on the things that actually give us joy. And it also, it identifies that where people might be finding something difficult, that they're in a position that they're able to ask for help early or they're connected with their community and that there's assistance for people early if they might be finding something that's a bit tough. So what we know at the very outset is if you've got good food, if you've got a safe and secure house, you've got friends and you're feeling connected and ideally you've got a job or you know, you've got enough income, basically you're, you're gonna be doing all right. I think it will give people a new perspective on health and wellbeing because it's about focusing on people and how they're traveling at that moment in time. It's about focusing on stopping people getting sick where that's possible because lots of disease is preventable or where people get sick, it's about intervening early. It's not only about investing at that ambulance at the bottom of the cliff when you're already so unwell that there's, um, you know, there's, there's no assistance around.